Okay, hello. Player. Hey, hello, YouTube players. I'll teach you about some thread types available and various methods of thread design. Certainly not all. An extended thread type count and group includes, but not limited to, group 1, the square, acne and trapezoidal. Group 2, buttress and knuckle. Group 3, worm threads. Group 4, V threads. And V threads roughly comprise of isometric, ISO fine, metric conduit, BSW, BSF, BA, BS conduit, brass, UNC, UNF, BSP, BSPT, NPSF, NPTF, and the thread I made in the machine shop. One of the first design products you'll have to is the screw jack, and it starts with the law of the machine. You should end up with these formulas. Mechanical advantage is equal to the force of the load divided by the force of the effort. The velocity ratio is equal to the distance moved by the effort divided by the distance moved by the load. Efficiency is equal to the mechanical advantage divided by the velocity ratio. The friction force, or the friction effort, is equal to the force of the effort minus the theoretical effort, which combines us to give us the law of the machine. The limiting efficiency of this law is given by the I'm not here to give you a full lecture on mechanical engineering. This is just a quick revision as we get closer to the thread design and what's been missing in both American and Australian educational systems. However, if we take this information and we put it into a spreadsheet, effectively you have a first stage design program. Aish kg is a force perpendicular to a 300 mm handle is able to lift one metric ton. That's a mechanical advantage of 380. And if that doesn't spark your interest, perhaps Mac Eng isn't the career path for you. In Australian design, it's evolved from elastic design principles to a limit state design method. The elastic design method takes the material's yield point, the point at where the load starts to cause permanent deflection, and applies a safety factor previously dependent on industry or codes. The problem with this method was that there was a lot left up to interpretation or overcost to design, which in turn jacked the project price, and one engineer's design could cost a great deal more than another's. Yet both were fit for purpose. It's still used, but mostly for estimating these days. The limit state design itemizes the types of loads on the system, multiplies these loads by a factor that is nearly always going to increase the load, which is 1.2 for permanent loads and 1.5 for live loads. And the wind loading factor from memory varies from 0.9 for uplifting scenarios to 1.35 for higher gusting zones. A system may not just be subjected to these forces. As this video is concerned with what's missing with bolt design, I won't be going through the limit state design. There is approximately 10 sheets or 10 methods of bolt design taught in AU colleges, yet nothing on pull-out forces or thread stripping. So going through my notes on YouTube to brush up on bolt design, I found a few publishers stating that their code or educational system was also missing pull-out forces for threads. Now there's another way to calculate this pull out force. I am designer for one and the hydraulic press channel has invested in a 150 ton press and some serious bolt destruction to shine light on this subject. This is 120 tons and here we go. Without workings but states a minimum safety factor of two. Okay so at a quick glance it would appear that High tensile nut and bolt arrangements are strong enough. Perhaps this is why bolt pull-out forces and thread stripping have been neglected in modern design education, at least anyway. Uh, however, 
As our technology is changing and anybody can print mechanisms these days, begs the question, what does the technology say about designing for pull-out forces? Hello Gemini, what is the current design method for pull-out force? Please return formulas, workings on an example for a square thread scenario. Show all workings in newtons and megapascals and double check your response. Bolt pull-out force for square threads. The design method for bolt pull-out force considers the shear strength of the weaker material between the bolt and the embedment. Here's how to calculate it for a square threaded bolt. Formula F equals pi asterisk D underscore M asterisk LS F underscore S where F pull out force newtons pi pi constant 3.14159 D underscore M mean diameter of the square thread MM L embedment length of the bolt MM S shear strength of the weaker material MPA F underscore S safety factor unitless working on an example let's consider a square threaded bolt made of steel embedded in concrete here are the parameters d nominal diameter of the square thread equals 10 millimeters important note we need the mean diameter for the formula l equals 50 millimeters s shear strength of concrete equals 12 megapascals typical value f underscore s equals 1.5 commonly used safety factor step one Find mean diameter, D underscore M, of square thread. For a square thread, the mean diameter is, D underscore M equals D, pitch. Since square threads typically have a pitch equal to the nominal diameter, we can assume the pitch, P, is also 10 millimeters. Therefore, D underscore M equals 10 millimeters minus 10 millimeters equals 0 millimeters. This is a special... Yes, you're right, Gemini. That really is a special... Hmm, okay. That's a bit to take in. And there's a few errors in the AO's response, like number one, the mean diameter of a square thread is equal to the OD minus the pitch divided by two. Then there were unit errors in the calculation, and once informed about the unit errors, they started getting the unit location wrong as well. I slept on this and came to the conclusion that AI is not reliable for engineering just yet. There's a lot of mistakes on the internet. And even in school textbooks, there are errors. These reasons are why FEA, finite element analysis, was developed in the first place. Everybody has free access to this tool in FreeCAD, the FEM workbench. There are other open source FEA programs, which include Prepo Max and Salon Maca Code Astro, which are more complex solvers. There may be more, but these are the ones I know about. So having a solver in FreeCAD is very convenient, but perhaps once you get more complex modeling up for analysis, it might be better to send them to another location to crunch while you continue to work without interruption or delay because meshing and analyzing chew the bandwidth. Let's do something a little more exciting. This was an M16 coarse thread failing. But wait a second, hold your horses. I've got a few things to explain. Calculex and FEA in general hates radii. Have you ever seen a mesh with a curve? The answer is no. Here is another really interesting thing about threads. And if what Les says in his video about the first thread taking up 38% of the load and the second taking up 25% and the third takes 18%, I think he stops there. However, we use this information that was perhaps obtained from deflection test and use a line of best fit, we can see that some of the load is theoretically absorbed as compression. Isn't this the most interesting thing that I've ever seen? Hmm, ever? Or if it's not, I don't know what is. This could be explained by the incredible release of energy on what on what we understood to be a progressive thread failure, sheer progressive thread failure is interesting, but not like that. <laughs> what I've created for myself is here is an FEA conundrum, because typically we know the UTS, the ultimate tensile stress, and in turn the yield stress of the material we are analyzing. And we look to see if our combined forces get close to stressing our job past the predetermined amount. Remembering codes or elastic design methods factorize the yield stress 
with safety factors. FEA is not really meant to go in with all guns blazing and load it up with the known failure load. You're supposed to be conservative, but I want your likes and subscribes, so I'm going to show you anyway. The first thing I am looking for you is this theoretical stress reversal. And FEA does appear to show this. And on all stress conditions. The second is which stress phase is past the minimum UTS. And I'll put this down the learning. I can't really tell you why. One Mises, one Mises is 1,369 megapascals. That's 140 kilograms per square millimeter. If you look over at the spreadsheet on the right, it will give you a clue on how to model this for analysis. If you divide the bolt and the load by 360 degrees, you'll end up with a wedge section that will mesh. There are several nuances within FreeCAD to good organization. Refer to a copy of the metric thread profile and sketch accordingly. Once you have completed the lattice to array on the thread V, then it's a matter of using the connect feature in the part workbench. If you have troubles extruding it as a solid, then the tolerance in the properties might need adjustment to get the other three sketches to connect to the array as one. Symmetrically extrude and it's ready to be sliced with two planes. Rotated half a degree in opposite directions to leave a one degree slice of the bolt. Rinse and repeat with the nut and your preparation is complete. If you're done and all is correct, you should be able to parametrically change the model for another analysis. There's one other thing you have to do before you can analyze the thread stripping on different materials. You'll be left with two different bodies. Control click in the 3D space, apply Berlin fragments, which is under the slice in the part workbench, and in the property set the mode to comp solid, and add 0.01 to the tolerance if you're getting meshing issues. This could be the cause of that trouble. Then set up and run your analysis, making sure to apply only 1 360th of the load you're testing. So what this shows from our stress concentration is that our stress plane is more conical for similar materials. I'm now going to run the analysis with a soft and nut material, say aluminium and steel for the bolt. <clears throat> you must remember to purge your analysis before running another with different materials or loads basically if you're about to change anything in the analysis folder purge on the other hand though if you're changing any geometry i find it best to delete the entire analysis simulation and start again <clears throat> with a softer nut the plane remains angled as the stress concentrations are similar however with a softer bolt, the stress concentrations appear to be more theoretical. Remember that these stresses have been induced by a known failure load. So calculus may not have solved this example correctly. What I wanted to show that there is variations and as a one size fits all, the formula wouldn't cut the mustard in regards to thread stripping, which is concurred by the hydraulic presses channel hydro destruction tests where the thread fails at the shank and appears to be a mean diameter in another test and also at the largest diameter the bolt OD but through the nut threads and the difference is there's no rhyme or reason. There's always a lot of room for improving engineering practices as our technologies improve. I think this is one avenue and I will revisit in my next downtime but would like to state without open source software i could not have published these observations and the world will benefit greatly from an engineering specific ai just please keep it open if you get a chance in your own time do the thread pull out formula test versus an fea test with lesser loads and and note the difference perhaps even publish your findings anyway thanks for watching now i'm off to my other hobby and that is the thread
stripping. <laughs>